So hello, my name is Anna Dushinsky and welcome to this next of our series of recovery stories. I'm here with Natasha Todd. I've actually known Natasha for about 12 years, we figured out, didn't we? Um, as Natasha was one of my clients and then went on to uh, do the training course and has had her own successful practice for around seven years. So today Natasha's here to share her own journey. My husband had lost his job, so I very much felt like I had to go out to work. And I absolutely hated my job because I was sort of having, it felt like I was doing 300 hours work in 100 hours each week, plus having to be perfect mum and come home, make meals, put my children to bed, start working again. And I basically just burnt myself out completely. Um, so I remember walking with the boys one day in the park and just realising I couldn't actually get myself back to the car right. and right. ringing my mum and saying, can you come and take my boys away? I can't do any more. And that that was the crash. From, from then on, I was in bed. OK, so so it went very quickly, very severely to, to you really could do very little. You were basically in bed for, for really quite yeah. a few months, weren't you? Yes, I think com completely bed bound, probably for three months, I would say. But for about eight months, I wasn't able to be in my own home looking after my own children. So that led me to kind of looking for the next piece. And that's where I found the 90 day programme at the OHC. And I guess when I met you um, <laughs> and I think the start of that 90 day programme was a real turning point for me because it was the first time that I had ever kind of heard of the concept of um, there, there kind of being another way of looking at life. You know, the fact that I had choice, that I didn't have to be pushing myself all the time or it, it just that kind of that we have the ability to maybe see it in a different way, which could feel different. And that was pretty mind blowing for me because it was just like someone was talking another language to start with. But I was really intrigued. And as I started learning the tools and, and, and doing the course, um, I just, it really felt right. Just the kind of doing the nutrition side, the psychology side, just felt right for me. And so that gave me some hope and motivation to to really keep going with it. So I think that was sort of the start of of really looking at everything in a different way. I think what I had done without realizing it was I had completely disconnected from who I really was. So when I went to boarding school, I couldn't be sensitive. I couldn't have these emotions because actually I was pretty unhappy and homesick. So I disconnected from that and chose to be quite tough and quite capable and quite strong and to achieve and succeed. And that became my identity. And so I had to keep doing that to feel okay. And I think what happened or started to happen as I worked through the course was I realized the pain of that disconnection, it, the, the pressure of that continual having to be this capable, strong person when actually that wasn't really me. So the first piece of it was realizing that you're holding all of that and you can let go. And it's just that concept of letting go of it, of all of it, is ma just massive. Um, and I think then it was realising that I was creating my own horror through that pressure. And so by gradually reconnecting, I was sort of coming back to something that felt better and gave me some more choices. Mm. 
Well, obviously, the, the tools that we learnt during the 90 day programme um, really helped. So having the awareness of what I was doing to myself was the first piece, because I'd had no idea how judgmental I was, how hard on myself I was. The, the kind of concept of self-compassion just didn't exist. Uh, so that was one big piece, I think, and it, it wasn't an overnight thing. I can't, even now, I'm not sure I can say what when that happened. It almost just, you just get to a point and think, oh, yes, it feels a bit better. And yeah, maybe I am sort of treating myself better. But that was definitely a big piece of it is using the stop process on my what I was doing to myself that kind of voice in my head that was just telling me that if it wasn't perfect I'd failed so that would that was a very big piece and I think another piece was working through one-to-one in in the therapy sessions just that understanding of how I'd got there and that ability to make it safe to reconnect to the emotions so absolutely, the awareness is the start point, isn't it? To, to even see that that is the case, that that's mm-hmm. what we're doing, that that is the identity we've created and how we're doing it. And yes, what you say around kind of understanding how that has come to be. I think for a lot of people, we're not quite sure how we've got there. <laughs> even if we can see it, begin to see it, it doesn't necessarily make sense. So beginning to unpick or make sense of that world. And yes, finally, as you say, starting to make it safe to, to reconnect to our bodies, to our emotions. For a lot of people, mm. that can feel quite scary, can't it? Mm. What kind of retrospectively, I guess, what were the other insights that you've gleaned through this process? I think... I realised somewhere during the illness that I didn't want to go back to that old life. I I actually, and I started to see that the illness was almost a gift because it, it needed to come along. And if it hadn't come along, my life was, something else would have gone wrong. So it it was that kind of realisation that, I'm meant to be on this journey. This is a journey I need to be taking. So, and I think that really helped because it wasn't an easy journey. There were some bad moments in it, but it helped me to come out of those bad moments a bit quicker because I knew that it was part of where I wanted to go. I wanted to create something new. I didn't want to go back to the old. It's always tough when you go backwards. And I think, you know, it's very common through, you know, through through the condition of chronic fatigue. It's not a straight line. So I would feel like I was doing well. And then for whatever reason, there'd be two weeks where you're back in bed. And I think that is always really tough because your mind immediately wants to say, oh, my God, what if I've gone back to the beginning and I've got another year to get back to where I was. So the tough times just kind of physically is when the health didn't feel like it was going in the right direction, it was that fear around what that meant. And being able to just kind of rest and believe, I haven't gone back to the beginning, this is okay. But I think each time that happens, there's a there was a part of me that went, I can't, I can't do this again, not again. <laughs> so that I remember that as being quite tough. It's sort of how do you get out of that when it when it happens? Yeah. I think I didn't do, I was gonna say perfectly, but I don't want to use that word now. <laughs> but, you know, there were times where I, you know, I was in it. So there might be a day or two or a week, but I think it was knowing and trusting that I had the tools I'd done it before and I believed I did believe that I was going that I could do it I believed I could I was going to get better I believed in the process or the or the 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 journey that I was on so 
I was fascinated in all the psychology tools, which is why I went on and trained in it. So that helped because I, I, it all made sense to me. Mm. So I could remember, okay, you know, something in my mind would go, you just, you need to do your stop process or you're catastrophizing this or, um, you know, you're giving yourself a hard time. So something would kind of come in to remember actually I don't need to panic about this I, I I can pick myself back up and create that belief and hope again and then do something to take that step out of it and of course each time it, it didn't last so long so then you have the evidence from the previous one to say I know if I do this it it'll be okay in a week or a few days or something so yeah and I think the, that piece of fear is such an interesting piece because it it kind of comes up in subtle ways and in layers and for me I was really quite shocked a few years after I thought I'd recovered found myself on holiday going to bed the night before we were about to climb Snowdon and it hit me and I out of nowhere and I thought I was recovered and it was that last piece of fear that was left in my mind saying what if you walk all the way up to the top and then that you hit that wall you know because you're somehow you don't forget that and and there's no way back you've got to walk all the way back down and I felt it in that moment and I had to use those tools even then took me an hour or so to calm down but I knew, I knew I could do it. And I got up the next morning and I did it. And I felt very liberated because that, well, I felt like sometimes these little last pieces linger and they come back and surprise you. And they're just a piece of that fear that has stayed, that memory that stayed there. The experience can be quite traumatic, can't it? I mean, let's face it, the experience is suddenly not being able to walk down the street or pick up your own children or get back to the car. You know, it, it isn't something, as you say, that is easily forgotten. And so it makes perfect sense that that, mm. that little echo, even yes. all that time later after all the recovery work you'd done and how far you'd come. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, you know, I always say to people, whatever's gone on before, you know, the experience of going through this can can be traumatic in itself and mm. that needs working through there's also a kind of grieving process for it right to some degree that has to happen as we recover as well because I hadn't realized that I probably appeared still quite strong and capable so people didn't know what I was going through or what I needed so I think that isolation was just it feeling like that there, that support wasn't there and it was partly coming from me not asking for it and it's partly just that the world doesn't know what you're going through and yeah I, I really struggled with that and funnily enough struggled with it almost more when I was re- kind of coming out the other end and I remember going to a friend's um, birthday lunch and just sitting there feeling as though I just come back from another planet and I could not, I just could not connect with these people and what they were talking about or what was important to them. And I felt this desperate isolation then because I thought I I was better and I thought everything would be fine. And I walked back to my car and burst into tears and, and just thought, why have I come through this really hard time just to feel like this? And that was another piece of that that real feeling of isolation. It's funny, isn't it? I mean, that integration <laughs> phase can be a really challenging one, actually, to some degree, almost you know, the most challenging to some people, because as mm. you say, you know, you've gone through this journey and the only way I can liken, or the only thing I can liken it to really, and I think we've had this conversation before, it's a bit like coming back from a war zone, mm. a world that, that has not shared that with you. And you've been through this amazingly challenging, but also life-changing experience. And everything else around hasn't kind of followed or caught up. And it it can feel like a real disconnect. Mm. Um, And yeah, I think coming into the reintegration phase as well, because you've worked so hard to get there, you kind of, as you say, feel like, well, you should be done now. This should just all be Mm. great. But actually there's 
there's more to do. There's a new world and life and, and how you are in that world to, to develop and to create, I guess, for some people. Mm-hmm. And that in itself has its own challenges as well. So I think that that's a really important point as well. So I've obviously changed career from being a lawyer to to being um, a therapeutic coach. And I feel I feel energized. I feel balanced. I'm doing something I love doing. I'm passionate about health and well-being. I love I love my job. I love connecting with people which as a lawyer it wasn't really about that um and I think I'm I have a much better relationship with myself and I think that's been a really key piece as well and and being very um kind of understanding that life isn't life's not meant to look great all the time but it's okay you know it's knowing that as a human we have bad days and that's okay and um but but just having that sense that I know where I'm going and I know who I am and it just all feels much more aligned and I make different choices now and make choices to create that balance for myself so that I'm never going to get back to that kind of place I came from It's interesting, isn't it, how as you move away from it, how it gets clearer and clearer and kind of your perspective around it becomes even more in focus, I think. Is that your experience of it too? Yes, yes, I think I think that's right. It's sort of, and I think that is part of the ongoing journey of life is you start seeing more and more of the layers and everything more clearly and in a way, it doesn't stop here. I think, you know, I'm still on a journey and I and I'm there's still loads I can be doing. Um, but it just but I'm I have a much clearer picture of where I'm going and what I want and yeah, and sort of where I've come from. I really like that theme because I think it's something that people say quite often is, okay, so, you know, once you're recovered, like that's done, right? I don't have to worry about any of this anymore. <laughs> and I know you'll, you'll probably be having those conversations with clients as well, but you kind of go, well, it's not exactly true. <laughs> there is this ongoing process, isn't there, of self-awareness, of self-development, of, of continuing to tune in. It's not like we kind of get better and drop all of that. It, it becomes part of how we operate in the world mm. and that that becomes well, that is a really important uh, piece to be aware of as well whether or not people always want to hear that exactly um but yeah so thank you so much for sharing your journey your story with us uh, really appreciate it and i know there's some really important themes that people will will really be resonating with out there so i really appreciate it thank you very thank much you. well thank you and thanks everyone for for watching and listening